The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. And we got markets picking things up really where we left off yesterday, up about two points in the S&Ps, but higher prices and bank earnings. Pretty good bank earnings coming out from Goldman, Bank of America, Citi, Schwab as well. We'll talk about them. We'll talk about Boeing in a moment, but let's go over the markets. We got the S&Ps. Makes a high last night, 59.18. Pretty remarkable. I was on the show yesterday kicking things off saying, you know what, we could see 5,900 today. Day, and we sure did. And we're above that price point and holding those levels right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 20 points, 20,638 right now. You get the Dow in negative territory, off about three tenths percent, 135 points in the red, 43,229 in the Russell, off about three tenths as well, six points in the red. Crude, easing tension. Seems like Israel saying that they are not going to go after Iran's ener energy structure. And that calming some of the fears. You saw that at 4.30 yesterday from $74 all the way down to a 69 handle. We're trading right now at $70.83 for the price of light sweet crude. Gold contract flat right now, 26.65. Silver down four pennies at 31.27. And notes and bonds, a little bit of a reversal of the trend that we saw yesterday as you have higher price and you have lower yield. We got the tenure up by 16 ticks right now. You're sitting with a yield of 4.06. 4.06, the yield on that tenure right now, the 30 year, up by 31 ticks, 120.24. We jump over to the dollar index, DXY. Now, when we had higher yield, you got all the way up to 103.35. We've pulled back in yield a bit. That's added a little bit of weakness to the dollar. We're trading right now at 103.07. And the VIX. Pulls back a bit, but still sitting at 1960. All things considered, we have an elevated VIX level right now, folks. As this market just plows higher, the VIX just won't give it up. Volatility premium priced into this market, and it's staying there. Even on days that we continue to make highs, you get the VIX sitting at 1960. All right, let's go over some of the bank earnings, and we're going to kick things off, and we'll kick it off with Goldman. Goldman, how about it? 45% profit drop. Not bad. Yeah, to put it lightly. The stock trading unit. Yeah, Goldman stock traders. Head to record. That's right. Best quarter in more than three years. And the records hit tied to exiting GM credit card partnership. Yeah, so they get a hit there. But nonetheless, the numbers... Yeah, they have a $415 million hit. But all things considered, not even worth mentioning, really, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, they went. So they had $17 billion in outstanding balances. So we'll see where they sell those loans. Net income, $2.99 billion or $8.440 a share. Revenue, $12.7 billion. That's a decent margins, man. Taking in $3 billion to the bottom line when your revenue is twelve point seven. dollars Investment banking of $1.87 billion. Market was looking for 1.68. Yeah. Merger advisory fees, 875 million. <whistles> Asset and wealth management business, 3.75 billion, up 16% from a year earlier. Management fees climbed 9%. <whistles> it's just all over the place, man. You jump over to Goldman on those numbers, they are trading higher. You closed at 522 yesterday, and look at this chart, man. And you're up to 537. You spike to 542. We just take a look at the three-year weekly right now. Man, it is remarkable. You have a company like Goldman almost doubling in share price over the period of one year. Right? Remarkable. Now, things have changed a lot since the last year, of course. All right. We go forward. Oh, what did I just do? Let's get back to the chart. There we go. We jump over to City. They're trading at 67.56 this morning. Bank of America, positive as well, up to 43.15. And SCHW, Charles Schwab, the parent of Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, 
73-84 as they get quite a pop as well. Now let's go over some of those numbers as they came in. So City gains across the board as trading outdoes expectations. Similar, right? Traders, big time. Bank of America, investment bankers, traders help earn earnings top estimates. Yeah, pretty, pretty big numbers across the board for these banks. And then Charles Schwab. Earnings beat. They're paying down some costly debt. That was a big deal for them. Earnings per share, 77. They beat the 75 there. Client transactional cash sweeps, which took a hit when customers shuffled funds in search of better yielding options, climbed $9 billion sequentially. Whew. Pretty remarkable, man. Third quarter net asset gathering of over $95 billion pushed year-to-date core new net assets to $252 billion, up 10% versus 2023. It's a big number, man. And cut some of their expensive debt. All right, we jump to Boeing. Talking about debt, they're going to make sure that they boost their liquidity. $25 billion is the number that they're going for. $25 billion they're going to raise in debt and equity. They're going to issue some shares here, too. Where is the shares? This one, I think. Yeah, $10 billion in shares. And they're going to add 15 on top of that. Yeah, Boeing, Boeing said some problems in their charts. So they ended September. This is Boeing with $10.3 billion in cash and securities. Yeah. Its operations had been burning through about a billion dollars a month before the strike, and they've only got $10 billion on hand. So they got a new $10 billion credit agreement in addition to about $10 billion in existing untapped involving credit agreements. And they got $45 billion in net. Yeah, and they just talked about they're cutting another 17,000 jobs on Friday. Check out Boeing shares on that news this morning. Talk about a little volatility, right? Up to 153, down to 147. We're positive right now by just uh, less than, yeah, a little more than a dollar to 150.22. But boy, you take a longer term picture of this one. And I was saying this downtrend channel almost takes Boeing if it ever gets back into it to bankrupt. And that's not going to happen, okay? There's only two airplane companies in the world that make airplanes, folks. Boeing and Airbus. Airbus is the European company. Boeing is the American company. And it's in our best interest to make sure that we have a company in the United States of America that makes airplanes. So Boeing is not going to go bankrupt, okay? Keep that in mind. With that said, there's no reason why I can't trade down to these lows you had in 2022, about 113. Yeah. You had some big volume down here on this trade lower. I mean, look at what we were doing in some of these weeks. You're talking about, at this low, 72 million shares. At the low of 113, which you did pop, 95 million shares. Yeah, we came down and tested on lighter volume and then did trade higher. But yeah, you compare that to doing 40 million right now, 46. Nonetheless, Boeing this morning, they're going to be up by a dollar at 150.23. We got S&P up by three. We got the Dow in negative territory. We're going to come back. We'll break down some of the market action. We'll take a look at that heat map, see what's moving the Dow in negative territory. Take a look at the NASDAQ, S&Ps. We'll take a look at that crude, and we'll check out gold. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up by four, NASDAQ 100 up by 22. And boy, Al, I got a lot of hiss in my ear. I'm not sure what got changed at that break, but something definitely got changed, pal. OK, this has happened before and you were able to fix it. So I'm not sure what got changed, but I got a lot of hiss in my ear right now coming back on my end. All right. We take a look at Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA. So they're going to be closing some stores. You pull it up. 1,200 stores is the number. Yeah, they're going to close 1,200 stores by 2027 and earnings topping estimates. Now, you take a look at their chart. They spike higher. They give it back a bit. You're at 939. You closed yesterday at $9. You're going to pop by about 40 cents on the open. And you take a look. That, yeah. 1,200 stores over the next three years. It's going to be 500 stores in fiscal year 2025 alone. And, yeah, they're closing some stores to tighten up the ship there. They have about 8,700 locations. But, yeah, they're going to be 500 closures basically immediately to adjust earnings. Yeah, they're going to give Walgreens, quote, unquote, a healthier store base. They're going to get rid of the bad ones. It's going to enable us to respond to shifts in consumer behavior and buying preferences is how they put it. Walgreens aims to employ the majority of the workforce affected by the closures, though it's unclear how many employees stand to lose their jobs. I don't know how you square that last one in terms of closing 1,200 stores and then taking everybody from the 1,200 stores and bringing them to everybody else. I don't know if that's quite the case, but nonetheless, not surprising. That's where they put it. And yeah, I do have a lot of hiss, Al, unfortunately. Um, I can go on, but it's way different from how we came into that commercial. And they got $37.55 billion for the quarter, up 6% from the same period a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, so good numbers for Walgreens. 
as they trade higher, and it seems like they're trying to right that ship, and it has been a tough go around, though. You talk about it, right? <whistles> oh, man. Even worse than I thought. This thing just doesn't stop. Unbelievable. 90... Wait a second, that's not... Yeah, that's it. Walgreens, yeah. I had to double-check myself. My goodness. Boy, stay away from that stock, man. I was saying, Boeing's not going BK. Well, that might not be the case with Walgreens, man. I don't think the government's going to step in and save Walgreens like they would Boeing. And boy, that is a straight shot to lower prices. And yeah, they're going to trim the ship. All right, they're going to try and get there. You pull up a company. We're talking about a company valued right now at about $8 billion market cap. And they're trying to cut their way to a healthier store base. We'll see if they get it done. That's a dicey one. All right, we check back in on the gold contract. It's been quite a run. Gold chart contract. Back to a daily. We spiked to above 2700 Late September, we're almost back at that level yesterday to 2684. We're trading right now at 2667. I was talking about it yesterday. Gold has performed remarkably well in the face of the dollar strength you've had here. I mean, this bounce in the dollar holding at 103. We got a little bit of weakness today on a little bit of lighter yield. But yeah, we are holding well. And you check out that gold contract, all right? You're trading at about 2700 right now. And it is remarkable when you look at talking about you might get a little consolidation here you know especially if you see it would be remarkable if you can just consolidate as the dollar has gotten that strength right maybe that's the consolidation that steps up that once you get a little bit of reprieve on the dollar side of things then maybe that's where goal catches its next leg but it is remarkable that you're talking about and i've done this before okay gold has now done three a to B, C to D formations, and it's almost basically completing them all. We'll go from shorter time frame to larger, okay? If you haven't seen this, it's worth it, folks. The first A to B, C to D takes place from the run that started in about September, okay? You trade up, you make a high of 24.33 in April. It was a pretty quick shot, all right? And then you can see that as you pull back... Okay, depending on where you take that pullback to. A one-to-one -one expansion of the move from February to April. You consolidate, and then you make a move again. Would bring you to about twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So, yeah, you're a little bit away. You're about $28 away from where you would be up to that price point. But that's your shorter end, okay? One-to-one. -one. Gold with a run from about 2000 up to almost 2400 Then you trade, trade back from 2300 and you make another 400-point run. So it's a $400 run, right? with a slight pullback and then another $400 run. That's your shortest term, shorter term time frame. I'm gonna remove that for some clarity here. Now, we take a look at the intermediate. Okay. Now the intermediate, we gotta take off some of these for some clarity here. All right, the intermediate one is the run that we had from about the ends of 2018, and that is a run that takes you from about 1,200 up to 2,000, okay? And then the run again, and you can see this one actually defied it, right? It actually beat the one-to-one. -one. That one-to-one, -one, you could have make the case, was about an $800 run from 1,200 to 2,000. You pull back, you make another $800 plus run, and we're well above that expansion. Okay, so that would be your intermediate zone, you could call it, right? Right there. And then the one that completes the most, which on a grander, whoops, I want to delete that. And delete that. And then you go back to the biggest of pictures. And yeah, I'm talking about this move right here, man. Probably from about two, th about... 250 bucks up to 1918 and this one's the most perfect of all that doesn't mean you can't get more than a one-to-one -one, okay but folks i'm talking about to like the dollar of a one-to-one -one expansion for the last quarter of a century isn't that pretty cool that's a quarter of a century technical formation on that chart that starts in the year 2000 
Does everyone remember that Conan Conan O'Brien skit in the year 2000? Man, remember when he used to do that and it was before the year 2000? And now it's the year 2024? Is anybody? Does anybody remember that? Let me know. Maybe I'm the only one that was watching Conan in the 90s. Um, but uh, he had a segment called In the Year 2000. Right, and uh, it is remarkable. I think about it all the time. I can't believe it's going to be 2025. Um, but yeah, here we are. But that is the formation going back to the year 2000, practically, and we are at a one-to-one. So just keep your guard up a little bit. You know, there's nothing to say that you don't get a little bit of a pullback. This has almost been a straight shot. Now I just went over how it's not exactly a straight shot, right? We've had A to B, C to D formations within that time frame, but boy, on a larger scale, right? On a larger scale. It looks like it's been almost a straight shot from the lows of 1600 to 2677. And look at that. I didn't even line up almost to the dollar. So gold doing pretty well, consolidating these levels about 2700. We're coming back to the market open, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you got the S&P barely holding on to those gains. We're positive by three points right now. NASDAQ slides into the red on the open by a couple points. 20,618, Dow off 120, and you got the Russell negative by two. We check in on some of those banks with their earnings numbers. You got Goldman opens up about 3%. Citi opens up about 1.5% right now. Bank of America shares 
up by 3.2%. Schwab, they're liking that, up by 6.9% for Schwab shares this morning, up $4.63 to $72.45. We check in on Boeing. A little volatility for Boeing. They open up by about 1% right now. We check in on Walgreens. Oh, they're liking those numbers. Okay. Walgreens up by 10%. I mean, here's what I'll say about Walgreens, folks, okay? It's a high-risk trade, okay? And a high-risk, high-reward is how it goes, so we know the game. But when you're trading something like this, you just have to be aware. And it's okay if you're trading it and you're aware of the risks, right? Because, yeah, you get a pop of 12% today, right? But be aware that you might wake up in the morning and find out that they're reclassifying for bankruptcy. Now, I don't know the fundamentals of this equity, okay? But I'm just talking about when you look at a stock chart like this, folks, okay? You don't have to know the fundamentals to know that there's something remarkably wrong with this equity right now. And they are trying to turn things around. They were up to 100 they're at $10 right now. This company has 863 million shares outstanding. It was approaching a $90 billion valuation at the top end of their trade, and you are now an $8 billion company. Of course you should be considering that this company has the ability to go out of business when they lose almost 90% of their market cap value. They've lost $80 billion of market cap, and all they have to lose is eight more, and they go BK. So we'll see where they go. The market's liking what's going on right now, though. They're closing those stores. Probably means they're going to be a smaller company, but yeah, they might make money, okay? And that's what the market's probably figuring out right now, is that, you know what? Maybe we're not going to go BK if they get rid of all of the bad stores. They trim 1,200 of them. Maybe they're going to be left with some of the stores that are actually making money versus the 1,000-plus stores. Now, I don't believe that they're going to hire everybody back from those 1,200 stores. The reason why they're doing that is to trim costs, save money, make some money. That's what businesses do. And, of course, not hard to do when you put out a little bit of a, a back-end disclaimer that they're going to try and hire everybody. Of course they're going to try. But you can't hire everybody in a store like this that's, that's losing money everywhere, and you're going to you know, trim your stores by 15% and somehow you're just going to add all those workers to your other stores? No, this is to get lean and mean right now. But boy, they got quite a move going on, man. Up by 15%. On a longer term chart, can you even see that 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 buy right now? Yeah, it's a tough one. Let's put it on three year weekly. And yeah, it is registering finally, I guess. You make a base for about four or five weeks on Walgreens and you're up right now to 1433. All right, let's check in on the big dogs. Apple shares. Look at them. Three bucks away from all-time highs of 237. You're trading at 234 right now. Apple, what are they pushing? $3.56 trillion company. I bring it up because NVIDIA is on the heels, man. Now, NVIDIA is trading a little bit lower today. We're going to talk about China right now. NVIDIA, 3.4. So they're on the heels. They're the number two company. Where's Microsoft? they got to be in the mix. Ooh, Microsoft, $240 billion below NVIDIA now still. Microsoft, $3.13 trillion company. Jump over to Google shares. Google's just above $2 trillion. We jump over to Amazon shares. Just at about $2 trillion as well. So you got Amazon and Google at about $2 trillion. You got Microsoft at about $3 trillion. You have NVIDIA at about $3.3 trillion. And you got Apple at about $3.3 Five trillion. That's right. Good morning, Dudette. How's the morning going over there? In the year 2000. Yeah, I like that one, Dan. Conan, he's the best, man. Conan was awesome. He is awesome. It's funny, though, how he went to TNT or TBS, and I, I kind of never watched him again. Isn't that somehow, and I love him. But, you know, it's, it just speaks to the power of, of primetime you know, network television and those time slots. And uh, what was he on first? Was he on Fox or something, right? Or what was he on? Was he on one of those cable channels first? I forget. That was back in the year 2000, 25 years ago almost. All right, S&P's up by four, NASDAQ up by 31. We check back in on yields. Yeah, continuing to rise right now. We got higher price, lower yield, 112.12 right now on the 10-year. We're sitting just above 4% right now, and we check in on the dollar. DXY, yeah, a little bit of weakness, still above 103, 10307. All right, let's jump to some more headlines in this morning. I got a couple I want to pull up. And how about this one? Yeah. TJ Maxx, TJX, and I would agree. 
this is where I always talk about sometimes to, to listen to, to yourself to a certain degree, right? Talk about how I should have been paying attention, man, in the early 2000s. We're talking a lot of 2000 references today. Um, moved down to Florida, 2004, I want to say. Been down there, down here 20 years now. Yeah, 2004. I have to check my math when those numbers get that large. Moved down about 20 years ago right now. And when you think about it, right, it is remarkable that it's been that long. But I talk about Amazon. I signed up to Prime so early. And it was because as a consumer, right, and Bezos talks about it, taking care of the consumer, man, they took care of the consumer so well, folks. I remember that at the time, right, and I talk about this all the time. And listen, I got Amazon shares. I'm an Amazon bull in the long run, okay? But the consumer matters, Amazon, slightly in the red today, right? But we're going to talk TJX in a second. Uh, look at this one, man. Up by 1.3% yet again. Look at this chart. You compare that to the chart of Walgreens, man. <whistles> this thing just does not stop. Remarkable acceleration. Yeah, and you talk about some of the numbers they were talking about here. They've doubled their sales over the past 10 years, $54.2 in the fiscal year 2024. And I love their goods, too. I do. Whether you're talking about um, Marshalls, one of my favorites, man. Marshalls got great products, all right? They, I would find some outstanding polo shirts, um, jeans occasionally, right? All that stuff. Yeah. And you just want to listen to it because Amazon at the time, it is remarkable, folks. If And many people weren't. I was on Prime early, and the deal with Prime early was... There was this cool thing that they did is that it, it included free shipping, okay? But what a lot of people never talk about, and this is one of the coolest parts of Prime, in my opinion, back in the day. Everybody would pay for shipping at the time. I'm talking about 2005, folks, okay? You order something online, it was pretty standard. You're paying $6.95 for shipping, $9.95 for shipping. You wanted to send it there, you know, U.S. Postal Service, two-day priority, you're paying $17.95, right? They're sending it UPS, they're sending it... Um, priority US Postal Service you're paying 15 17.95 even back then I didn't want to wait for things as a consumer okay I was a young single guy in my 20s I had disposable income I could afford to maybe pay for two-day delivery because when I ordered something I didn't want to wait a week right it was very um, prohibitive ordering something for a week so what happened Amazon gives you free shipping but here's what else they did early on in Prime. They said it's free shipping or we'll give you two-day shipping, which is usually like $14.95 for only $4.95. It was some huge discount where I said to myself, this is a deal and a half. And so what I did was I would use And then what would happen is sometimes it wouldn't get here in two days. Right? And I'd be like, come on, man. I paid for Prime. I paid you five bucks for the two-day. It didn't get there. They said, well, you know what, sir? We're going to give you a $25 credit in your account. They always took care of me, and that mattered. So pay attention a little bit. Well, they're going to talk technically on TJX when we come back, folks, and we're going to take a look at that heat map, see what's driving this market. I'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets. S&P's little choppy. S&P's right now up by two. NASDAQ up by 13. Dow off by 282. You're saying, how's the Dow off by 282? What is driving the Dow? I do love these heat maps on the Thinkorswim platform. You jump over to the Market Watch tab. You get the heat map. You can ju jump through each indice. I spent plenty of time, if you watch the program, curtailing why it makes absolutely no sense to do a price-weighted index, folks. If I was ever a, a professor of any type of uh, high school, college, we give grade school a break. Um, but once you get to that degree, and I gave an assignment right to students, and I said, create a formula for a stock index of a variety of companies and tell, you, tell me how you're going to calculate the performance of that stock index on a daily basis. And I came back to you and I said, I'm going to use the price of their shares. You'd say, why in the world would you ever do that? Because the price of a share actually has nothing to do with the value of a company. We all know this stuff, but it's bonkers. But I bring that up because on a day like today, when you have United Health revising their forecast and down 10% for a company that's trading at $550, that is going to do it, folks. Okay? United Health is down $56. In a price-weighted index, that's going to destroy the entire index. So don't look to the Dow like it's this huge weakness today. It is a huge weakness today because it's a price-weighted index, and you have a company that yesterday was trading at $608, is down $55 this morning. Now, and I always, I always bring it up, okay, but it is remarkable when you talk about, so they're down $55, $60 almost, okay? And then you compare it to a company like Intel that's trading at $23. Cisco is trading at 54. United Health, Cisco would have to go bankrupt. Cisco and Intel could go bankrupt. And it would be barely more than the impact that United Health is having today, right? Remarkable. Meanwhile, yeah, anyway, it speaks for itself. You got Chevron, slightly lower as well, down by about 2% in the Dow. Caterpillar, off by about 6 tenths percent, but you can see that Dow number of 300. United Health, they're down by 9 plus percent, and we jump over to United Health, and yeah, they uh, missed their forecast. So greater than expected hit from a change hack, weighs on the guidance. Yeah, forecast falls short of the leverage, and it's a big one, it must be, because they are down 10%, man. Biggest intraday decline since covid March 18, 2020. Uh, the company has rarely disappointed investors with guidance that falls short, so expectations were high. Executives emphasized that the targets are preliminary and they aim to outperform them. They're trying to tell the market they're setting the bar low. The market says, no, 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 you don't usually set the bar low. You guys usually deliver. You're not delivering right now. And new 2024 guidance falling 
below the average. Adjusted profit, 2750 to 2775 They drop it by a quarter from the prior top end of the range. And, uh, yeah, a bigger impact from a catastrophic hack of the company's change healthcare division. One hack. I mean, it's remarkable, right? I say one hack. One hack can bring down a company if it's big enough. Um, shares are up 15% through the year right now, but, yeah. They come in, they beat on this quarter, okay, 715 versus 699, revenue of 108.8 billion versus 99.2. But boy, um, the market not liking, the, they're revising their forecast, they're saying that they're setting the bar low, but the market's like, I don't know, I don't know if we believe you here. Um, moving that thing, you got United Health. Where are we moving to now? Let's see. Down by 9.2% to kick things off. Let's see how some of those banks are trading as we're about 16 minutes. Oh boy, what happened to Goldman? Well, that's going to that's gonna change what the Dow's doing as well. They were helping offset some of that action with a $20 gain in their share price, and not so much anymore, man. Whew, you talk about high expectations. Yeah, red flag. I like it, Eloto. Get those red flags up, man, totally. Red flag in the air for United Health, and what is going on for Goldman? Can you imagine if Goldman disappointed? Now, I don't know what they just said on the conference call. I do love on Thinkorswim how you have the exact time the numbers are coming out. You have the exact time on the chart that they started their conference call. It happened to correlate when the market opened. Uh, always interesting when supply equals demand, right? This stock runs up on no volume. Look at this Goldman Sachs, right? What do we have? 700 shares, 2,000 shares, 9,000 shares. The market opens, and we do 302,000 shares and 233. Supply and demand on the market open. We, we've seen it before. Pretty remarkable. You give it back that quick, though. Goldman. They get back $20 on the open, man. Whew. All right. We jump over to City. Yeah, man, look at this market. They're saying, no, no, no. We're not buying these banks. Whew. That is a tough one, man. Morgan Stanley was already out, but they're going to give it back as well. Yeah. Bank of America, well, they hold on to the gains. They should... Thank their lucky stars. They're positive after quite the turn they had. 1.6% to the upside for Bank of America shares, up by 68 cents. Schwab was the biggest gainer, and they're holding on to that gain. Yeah, up by 8.3%. Biggest gainer of the banks this morning, that is. You see the acceleration they have. A little bit of a different story with Schwab, of course, versus a company like Goldman. Schwab, they're paying down some of the debt. They have to get their balance sheet in order. Market seems to like what they're doing there. All right, back to TJX. So we're up by 1.5% again today. You're at 117, okay? And I talked about when we're coming into the last break. It is remarkable. And think about how cool that was, right? So not a lot of people know this, but think about it. Back in, I think it was like 2006, 2007, maybe 2008, 9, somewhere like there, I joined Prime. And like I said, they had two-day delivery for like $5. And the best part was, though, is if they didn't deliver, they made it right. They made it right. And, and they many times they didn't. Okay, back in 2005, they would try and get your product in two days. There were many times it just didn't happen. And what did they do? They made it right. They gave you enough credit. I think they gave me back like my entire prime payment or something. It was just I felt like, man, they're just really they don't they they, they make you feel good. So listen to those things when it happens, because, man, I wish at that time that I said to myself, this is remarkable. Everybody's going to want to use Prime. Why are you going to pay anybody else for shipping? And at that time, Prime was probably 59 or $69, right? It definitely wasn't 119 or 129 that you're paying right now. It didn't come with video or any of that other stuff. It was just shipping, and it was so worth it at the time. Now, I bring that up because, yeah, TJX, man, they're a remarkable company. You know, you save money, you buy break brands, all that stuff. And, and um, yeah, they got it going on. And you jump over to TJX. It was just an interesting article. Is this the one? Yeah, it is. And I wanted to get to this quote they had because I think it speaks to volumes. And this is a 10-minute video over here for CNBC, but it got me thinking, okay? And, yeah, for price-sensitive consumers where we are right now, right, Everything seems a little expensive still. We're adjusting to higher inflation that we've had over the last four years. Even if those numbers have started to plateau, they're not going down, right? Marshalls, Home Goods, TJ Maxx. As I mentioned, nearly double the sales that they've had over the last decade. But this is the part I want to get to because it's what I agree with. You're getting, and this is where you always can't guarantee it, as in they get a surplus of goods. Sometimes they got the good stuff. Sometimes they got the bad. Uh, I used to even know when 
marshals would get deliveries. I forget when it was, but I had the day that they would get deliveries because I, you know, I asked an attendant or something like that, a salesperson there. I said, ah, the, the trucks come in on Wednesday. You know, that's usually when sometimes, you know, we'll put out the new products. That's your best bet if you want to get one of the best shirts because sometimes they bring in polo goods, right? They got Dockers, whatever they got. They got a million brands in there, Under Armour, Nike, et cetera. I don't know if they have a lot of Nikes, but uh, this is it. If a logoed shirt, if a logoed shirt, think about polo, okay? is picked up and purchased as soon as it's walked out of the store. Nobody knows you got it from Marshalls. Nobody knows you got it from TJ Maxx. Okay, all they know is you're wearing a polo shirt. And not like brands matter in that the degree, but we all know brands do matter. People like brands. Metal, That's why gold Nike, is still king. the company that it they continues are. continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets a little choppy. S&Ps holding on to those single-digit gains. We take a look at Tesla. Tesla up by 1.7% today, 223 right now. You see the drop there from their robo-taxi event Thursday evening. You come into that e event last week at 240. You're trading at 223. It is pretty remarkable that those robots, right? I, I wonder if we've all heard of them. They, they were controlled by people, the, ro the robonoids, whatever they call them. Um, how does that make sense, man? I don't understand how that makes sense. Okay, it's it's a dog and pony show over there. Be careful. I am very highly considering adding another short, even in my own position. We're not short right now. My newsletter in there. We're not. We had been at one point going back ooh, in April or so. We caught a little bit of a run on that first thrust, and we got stocked out at one degree for a small loss. But I'm thinking about it again, man, because 
you know, you got you got shows out there where they're talking about those robots are going to run the world, and all they are is remote control robots. Folks, we've had remote control robots for 20 or 30 years they could have put on that show. Okay, if the technology ain't there, it ain't there. Now, I bring that up because this article from Amazon. So Amazon, they're using tech from Kosla Ventures back startup to run robot warehouses at Whole Foods. Not surprising, man. Amazon's been using robots to run their warehouses for, I think, over a decade now. Right when they purchased one of those big companies a while back. And yeah, they're adding them to Whole Foods. They plan to attach automated warehouses to Whole Foods supermarkets so the choppers can purchase goods from brands not typically stocked at the organic grocer. Now they have a video, okay, at a recent presser held at Amazon warehouse in Nashville. They have a video out there demonstrating the use of the technology. In the video, robots can see pulley. They pull trays of soy sauce, canned pineapple, coffee pods. They hand them off to other robots with grocery bags. Robots are going to be in the back end, man. That's the deal. Now, I bring it up because could you imagine if Amazon ever put out a video like this of the capabilities of their robots, of this Coastal Adventures, if they put out this video for their robots, and if the world ever discovered that those robots were just being controlled by remote control. No, that's not what's happening, folks. All right, Waymo's driving cars, Amazon's using robots, and Tesla is just spinning a story at this point. Remarkable. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. I see our man Basil Chapman in there. He's getting ready for the Tiger Technician's Hour. He's coming up next, folks. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Have a great one, everybody.